want or do you want to live forever? Because a lot of people don't like me. Tell me, what's wrong? They want to bury me, I'm worried. I'm losing my mind, look down the barrel of my nine and my face is blurry. Falling to pieces and my guilty. I pray to the Lord, but he ignores me, I'm fortunate. If you like what I do and want to see more, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Link is in the description below. What's up guys, Keenan from Keenan KTV here and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to take a closer look at how Deontay Wilder can beat Tyson, the Gypsy King Fury. This is not my prediction video by the way, I will simply just go over how each fighter can win. I already made a video on how Tyson Fury can win this fight, so now it's Deontay Wilder's turn. With that being said, let's jump right into the video. This fight is personally my favorite fight this year. It even surpasses the Conor McGregor vs. Habib Nurmagomedov fight. Because over the years, I became very fond of Tyson Fury, and I also always liked Deontay Wilder. He was a, and still is, a very stand-up guy and just wants to prove himself, and that is what makes a great fight. Tyson Fury wasn't the same after he beat Vladimir Klitschko and took off what was about two years, two and a half years, and he's finally back, right? In his comic fight, he was still a bit heavy, and then against Pianeta, he looked as good as he could, in my opinion, right? Personally, what I have liked to see another two warm-up fights, if you want to call it, but in reality, I think Tyson Fury needs that motivation, right? I think that what got Tyson through the Sefer Safari fight was the challenge of coming back after that long layoff, and then the Pianeta fight, that was like, get this fight done and I'm gonna fight Wilder type of mentality. So it really came down to motivation and I think motivation is what is driving Tyson Fury. He jokingly talked about on the podcast with Joe Rogan that he would, you know, slip back into depression after he beats the Deontay Wilder. Let's hope not, but like I said, with Tyson Fury, it always comes down to motivation. But while Tyson Fury was down and out and trying to get back up, and be his old self, Deontay Wilder was steadily just retaining his title, steadily just racking up wins after wins, and he was still looking for that big fight. It is not against Anthony Joshua, but it is against Tyson Fury, and personally, this fight, in terms of skill, in terms of charisma, in terms of just being able to sell an entire storyline behind it, this fight is, in my opinion, a lot more interesting and a lot more intriguing. Anthony Joshua rarely speaks, right, he's just a very well-promoted fighter, presented for big companies like Under Armour, like he recently signed a deal with Destiny and he was able to promote that. But when it comes to being able to have a personality and be the type of guy that's going to make you talk about you, that is definitely Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, you know, same can be said about him too. That is why I think this fight is very interesting. While Tyson Fury was trying to get back to himself, Deontay Wilder was fighting and winning. Now, during that time period, I think that Tyson Fury declined as a, as a fighter, in my opinion. And whereas Deontay Wilder, I think he has gotten a lot better. I think that the activity and the high level experience over the last couple of years is definitely in the favor of Deontay Wilder. He was the one fighting in championship fights, defending his belt, being very active, whereas Fury was not, right? So definitely activity is very important in this game. This is not a game where you can leave and then come back and fight in the biggest fight, right? This is a very, very serious sport and, you know, seriously, it must be taken. One thing that is very interesting in this fight is the fact that both fighters are very unorthodox. They are very elusive and very weird. They're very awkward. And we have heard Tyson Fury talk about him having the superior boxing skill and the superior all-around game. Whereas Deontay Wilder is very notorious for being very wild and dangerous in terms of taking risks that he shouldn't, but he sometimes overcommits the punches, leaving himself exposed, the notorious windmill meme, right? All of that. But I think their styles will match and match differently than most people expect it to. Deontay Wilder has a lot of technical fouls, right? He isn't textbook. He does not stick to the traditional boxing approach. But if we were to break him down with just physical attributes, he has great power, great 
hand speed, great footwork. Whereas Tyson Fury is also pretty light on his feet if you want to call it. But I believe that everything that Tyson Fury has said about himself is true. But I do believe that it is a bit out of proportion with the reality. I think that he is as good as he says. But I think that in this fight people overrate his abilities. Why I think that is because one. He's probably going to come in heavy right as he always did. I don't think he's going to be as light as he was against Klitschko for example. So I don't expect him to be able to be light on his feet. I think that going into the Wilder fight, I think Wilder being the very thin and very still very buff fighter if you want to you know break him down physically so as the fight goes on right and the fight is entering the sixth seventh tenth round i will have to favor the fight for deontay wilder he has great cardio doesn't seem to fade and i do believe that if tyson fury wants to be able to slow deontay wilder down he needs to have punching power i'm not saying he's a light hitter i do believe that if he's able to land over and over again those shots will accumulate and they will have an effect on him but deontay wilder hasn't really taken a lot of punishment so i think that he's very much so able to take that punishment now what tyson fury does have is that physicality that very big and heavy frame right six foot nine he's a very very heavy fighter and if he can go up against you and lean on you and make you carry his weight that is going to fade you that is going to tire you out but he's not the fighter to do that he rarely just goes in there and just tries to weight bull you lately all he prided himself on was being light on his feet being the heavyweight sugar Ray leonard if anything less it's a failure right that is what his aim is and against deontay wilder i don't think this fight is going to be chest to chest i don't think that so that is why i have to favor that the longer the fight goes on the more dangerous it's gonna get for tyson fury and a lot of people may think that the longer the fight goes on the more it's gonna be in tyson fury's favor but like i said i don't see deontay wilder slowing down and i think the fight is going to be heavily coming down to physical ability right physical how are you physically how long can you keep it up how much slower did you get over the rounds and in terms of just boxing skill wise yes tyson fury is a lot better and i do believe that he's probably going to win the majority of the rounds but i I do believe that Deontay Wilder, if he is going to win this fight, he's going to land that right hand shot as he has always done. And I believe that a lot of people are underestimating Deontay Wilder's boxing ability. He is definitely not the purest boxer in the game. He is, he is no Floyd Mayweather. He's not a Pernell Whitaker. He is just not that type of fighter, but he does not need to be that type of fighter. Vladimir Klitschko was a great textbook boxer, and we saw how that ended up for Vladimir. He got gun shy, and he just never was able to pull the trigger on him. Deontay Wilder, however, is very aggressive, very wild, very impulsive, and that is very dangerous. The similarities between Wilder and Anthony Joshua is what I think would make Tyson Fury beat Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is a textbook boxer. What you see is what you get with him, right? And with Deontay Wilder, you never know what you're going to get. That's that's why I think this fight is very much so the bigger, the biggest fight in every division. So Tyson Fury, he's not going to be fighting a textbook fighter. He's not going to be knowing what is going to be coming at him. We all know that Tyson Fury has a great hook and a tremendous right hand shot. But unlike Vladimir Klitschko or Anthony Joshua, I don't think Wilder is going to be the type of fighter that's going to get gun shy. I think that Wilder is going to be able to throw and be willing to throw and be willing to take one hit to give another one back. And that is what is going to be making this fight very much so interesting. Because the more risks Deontay Wilder takes, the more opportunities he he may get himself and the more opportunities that he gets to land his right hand the bigger his chances are of winning and it's not as simple as Deontay Wilder finding the opening to land his right hand shot the styles mesh together each fighter can make a great case on how they can beat their opponent Tyson Fury very much so a big risk taker leaves his hands low head movement Deontay Wilder throws crazy punches doesn't is not afraid to throw punches and he's very very athletic so making the case for both fighters and how they can win is very much so logical Tyson Fury can win this fight because he has experience at the top level great skill great footwork great boxing brain and then we take a look at Tyson Fury and then we take a look at Deontay Wilder also a very athletic fighter tremendous power great speed is not afraid to throw is a risk taker so this is why I believe this fight is my personal fight of the year but what do you guys think who do you guys think is gonna win leave it all in the comment section down below as always i'm keenan from keenan ktv signing off later